Hi everyone, I'm Eric Roselli, the Chief of Adult Cardiac Surgery and the Surgical Director of the Aorta Center at the Cleveland Clinic. And I'm here with uh, one of the newest additions to our staff, uh, Marianne uh, Kopravanich, who is an amazing surgeon, to talk about the topic of aortic root surgery for patients with aortic valve disease. Welcome, Marin. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, I think one of the questions that comes up, first of all, in this whole sort of subject is uh, what exactly is uh, valve sparing aortic root surgery? Uh, wh why is this relevant? Patients with valve disease. What, 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 tell us a little bit about the root and the valve. What's going on there? So, um, uh, aortic valve sparing root replacement is an um, important kind of a segment today in addressing the dilation of aortic root aneurysms. It is uh, important in a ways that for younger patients who have relatively preserved functional valve, we can replace the root with saving the valve and having basically restoring normal anatomy of the patient allowing them to have very um, basically normal life uh, durability of that valve without having more interventions or having any anticoagulation down the line. The aortic valve isn't just some moving part sitting at the top of your heart, right? It's part and parcel of that first part of the aorta that we call the root. So in order for the aortic valve to function well, there's a whole bunch of different structures that are involved with it. The, what we call the annulus or the opening to the heart where the valve sits. The, the root, that first section of the aorta really sits inside the heart, doesn't it? I mean, we often yeah. have to kind of separate muscle off of that root of the aorta. The valve is suspended inside of that first section of the, of the root. And so um, a lot of times people need a new aortic valve because it's stenotic or degenerated or calcified. But a lot of times the primary problem actually involves the root itself. The other components of the valve are sort of stretched out. That's aneurysm that you're talking exactly. about, right? A more conventional way to handle that root aneurysm is to replace everything. The, those uh, other options are often referred to as a bentol procedure, right? Can, right. can you kind of tell well, us a little about that? Yeah, a biobentol is kind of a more traditional way of dealing with this root surgery. Um, where you have the aneurysm dilation of your aorta, aortic root, and uh, it's a little bit simpler because you just replace pretty much everything. You replace the aortic valve, you replace the root, the sinuses, all that complex anatomy that you mentioned, and then you pretty much just reattach those uh, coronary buttons to the root. At the end, you get this prosthetic valve instead of your own valve that you had, that uh, if it's a mechanical, you need anticoagulation. If it's a biologic, it has certain lifespan durability. Right, and as you were saying earlier, the advantage of one of these valve sparing operations is you keep that living valve. I hope you're right that it has the potential to last a lifetime. Correct. But it's certainly in the right selected patients where the moving parts still look healthy, our goal is to keep that living valve, hopefully for a lifetime without anticoagulation, right? Exactly. And so, um, Again, you know, we, we talk about sort of patients in these categories as though they, you know, they have valve disease and then they have root disease or maybe a combination of both, but it's way more complex than that, right? There's a whole spectrum of kind of involvement in things. Which kind of patients do you think, uh, let's say, which kind of patient is the ideal patient for one of these valve sparing root replacements, what we refer to as a reimplantation procedure? Well, ideal patient would be a younger patient who pretty much has preserved his aortic valve. It's a kind of a functional valve with isolated root dilation. The valve that requires minimal, what we call a tweaking or repair of the leaflets, and pretty much just requires replacement of the uh, root itself, yeah. of the aorta. Yeah, and so um, I've noticed that over the years, um, as we've gained a better appreciation for this and we do these operations better, that we seem to lower the threshold of when we do it, Absolutely. right? Because if you wait until the aneurysm gets too big, certainly there's the risk that it can rupture and, and that's a fatal complication. Of course, we want to avoid that. Um, but also if you watch it stretch for too long, it can cause the, the leaflets, so the moving parts of the valve to be damaged. And it's a lot harder to save something after it's been pretty beat up yeah. from, from that process. 
So what we kind of got to do is uh, pick that sweet spot when we think the aneurysm is big enough that it might be dangerous to watch it too long because we worry about it rupturing, mm -hmm. uh, but also kind of get to it uh, before the leaflets have been damaged. And, uh, uh, and you know, the, the cool thing is in a center like ours and, and, and other sort of centers of excellence, um, with enough experience of these, we can keep the risk really low. Right. Absolutely. So there's pretty good data um, from the national database that shows that the volume of aortic root surgery that a center does correlates directly with the outcome. So when I say outcome, I mean the risk of death, right? Yeah. Heart surgery, that's always a risk. And so at our center, compared to even other university centers, our mortality rate is one third of those places. Pretty cool because we have such a huge experience. So we do over a thousand thoracic aortic surgeries a year. I think it was 1,063 last year. We showed it the annual report and 122 of those were these valve reimplantation procedures. And we've consistently been doing over a hundred a year. And so uh, we can do them quickly and safely, just as safely as, as that Bentol operation that you were talking about. Yeah. What about if the patient comes to us and they have a dilated root and their valve is leaking? That's a great question. So um, you already mentioned there are multiple shades of gray. It's not everything black and white. And of course, if there is a big root, big aneurysm, almost all of the valves are gonna be leaky because they're not gonna be coapting well. But the question is what kind of a leak it is. Would this be kind of what we call a central leak, kind of a symmetric leak? Or would this be maybe eccentric leak, which means it's not really just from dilation, maybe it is from some, or a damaged leaflet somewhere. So it really depends on how preoperatively that leak looks like, and also how it looks when we look at it. And then it's our judgment where our experience of a high volume comes in and uh, tells us where we can repair this valve durably enough, right. to be good enough for long enough time uh, to make it a worthwhile for the patient and safe enough. So it kind of varies. Uh, if it's dilated and leaking, doesn't mean we cannot fix it. It still depends on these other variables that we have to look at. And the imaging has just gotten so good. And our understanding of how that imaging correlates with what we find in the operating room. So sometimes I'll tell a patient, hey, 95% chance or better, and maybe even underestimating that, that we're gonna save this valve. And I think we're just gonna keep getting better as we keep working and building teams and we have more personnel with this kind of expertise. So it's been really fun uh, to work together with you and you've been just a, an awesome addition to our team and and uh, I'm looking forward to us working on some research projects to study all these questions more. We're, we're doing some cool stuff with newer imaging techniques to try and help guide us. And, um, and I think the message for our patients should be um, if you may be a potential candidate for one of these problems, is to gather the knowledge you need and seek it out from people who are really experts in this field. We're happy, of course, to help you in that process in Cleveland, and we thank uh, Adam and his team at heartvalvesurgery.com uh, with all the wonderful teaching they do. Thanks, and thanks for your time. Today. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.